Hi Bobcats, this is Miss Lee, and today's video lesson is on integers, opposites, and absolute value. Don't forget to take notes as you're watching this video. Okay, whole numbers located to the right of zero are our positive numbers. These are the numbers that we worked with all throughout elementary school. When we had a number line, we had, number, we had zero, and then we had numbers that went to the right. They were positive. They were numbers that were greater than zero. This year, we're going to look at the whole number line. We're going to look at not just the numbers that are to the right, but also the numbers that are to the left of zero. And these are called our negative numbers. Negative numbers are to the left of zero. They are the numbers that are less than zero. In math, opposites are the same distance from zero on a number line, but they're on different sides. Take a look at one. One is one distance for, or one unit from zero on the right side of the number line. So the opposite of the right side of the number line would be the left side. So what's one unit from zero on the left side? Well, it's negative one. So negative one and one are opposites. Look at negative four. It is one, two, three, four units from zero on the left side. The opposite of the left side is the right side. So what is four units from zero on the right side? It would be the positive four. So negative four and positive four are opposites. So basically a positive and a negative are opposites. Negative one is opposite positive one. Negative four is opposite of positive four. Three would be opposite a negative three. These whole numbers, their opposites and zero are what we call integers. Okay, integers is a number of classification. They include all of the numbers, positive whole numbers, the numbers that are to the right of zero on the number line, and now the numbers that are to the left of zero on the number line, the negative whole numbers. And of course, it, call, it includes zero as well. Okay, so now that we're going to deal with positive and negative numbers, whenever we have situations that we're looking at or that we have to read, we're going to have to look for those clue words that are going to tell us if it is a positive or a negative number. In elementary, all of our numbers were positive, so we didn't have to worry about that. But now we have an extra step. We have to identify the numbers as being positive or being negative. So look at A. The temperature dropped 21 degrees. Okay, so I need to look for the clue word that's going to tell me if this 21 is a positive or a negative. And that clue word is dropped. Dropped means to go down. It means you're decreasing in temperature. So that would be a negative 21. B, a football player caught a 20 yard pass. Well, caught is my clue word. So if you know anything about football, if you catch a pass, that means you're going to gain yardage. It's a 20 yard pass, he gained 20 yards, so that would be a positive 20. C, you withdrew $15 from your bank account. Okay, clue word is to with, he withdrew, or you withdrew, you withdraw. If you're not really familiar with banking terminology, this is one that you will see a lot throughout your life. When you withdraw money from your bank account, that means you're taking money out of your bank account. So how does that affect your bank balance? Well, it's going to decrease it, right? So this would be a negative $15. Go ahead and pause the video, do problems e, D, E, and F, and then come back and check to see how you did. Okay, D, a dolphin dives 35 feet below sea level. It would be a negative 35 because below sea level means you're going down, you're going deeper, it's negative. A deposit of $75 was made to your bank account. This is a positive 75. Deposit is your clue word. This is another bank terminology. It's the opposite of withdrawing money. Deposit means you're putting money into your bank account, so you're increasing the balance. It's getting larger. And then F, a quarterback is sacked for a loss of seven yards. Did you get negative seven? Loss means he lost seven yards, so he decreased seven yards. How'd you do? Okay, let's talk about our last topic, absolute value. The absolute value of a number is the number's distance from zero on a number line. Okay, let's talk about distance. Distance is always positive. 
And I want you to write that somewhere in your notes. I want you to write always positive. Absolute value is always positive. If you wear a Fitbit and you want to track the number of steps you took in a day at school, but you decide you're going to walk backwards the whole day, is your Fitbit going to show that you wa walked negative steps? No, it's still going to show positive step because step is a distance. It doesn't matter if you're stepping forward, if you're stepping backwards, if you're taking steps to the left or steps to the right, you still took a step. It's still a distance. It is a positive. Okay, so absolute value is always positive. Very important to remember that. The other thing is the symbol that represents absolute value. And that's going to be these two vertical lines. They look like two parallel lines with a number in between. You would read that as the absolute value of negative 3 is or equals 3. Because the distance that negative 3 is from 0 on a number line is 3 and distance is positive, therefore absolute value has to be positive. What if I had this? How would we read that? It would be read as the absolute value of, and what's the number inside? Five. Well, I know it's going to be a positive five because absolute value has to be positive. Okay, what about this one? Well, this would be read as the absolute value of, what's inside? negative 10. Well, I know absolute value has to be positive, so it's going to be a positive 10. So it doesn't matter if it's a positive or a negative number that's inside your absolute value symbol, the answer will be a positive number. Okay, so let's go ahead and try some. As we go through these, make sure to yourself you're saying how you would read this. This first one would be read as the absolute value of 7. Well, it's going to be a positive 7. The absolute value of a negative 7. Again, absolute value is always positive, so it is also a positive 7. But take a look at this next one. What's different about this one than our first two? Do you see that it has this negative symbol on the outside? Well, remember, negative also means opposite. So you would read this as the opposite of the absolute value of 7. Well, we know the absolute value of 7 is 7. And what's the opposite of 7? Well, 7 is a positive, right? So the opposite of that is a negative 7. So a little trick to remember is that if you have a negative symbol on the outside of your absolute value sign, then your answer will be a negative number. Look at the next one. This one would be read as the opposite of the absolute value of a negative 7. Well, because I have this negative symbol on the outside, that means our answer is going to be a negative, and it will be a negative 7. Okay. Next one. What is the absolute value of 3 tenths? It doesn't matter if your number inside is a decimal or if it's a fraction you're still going to treat it the same way. You're still looking at the distance from zero. And again, distance has to be a positive. So the absolute value of 3 tenths would be 3 tenths. Here we have the opposite sign, right? The negative symbol, that means we're going to have a negative answer. So the opposite of the absolute value of negative 8.25 is going to be a negative 8 and 25 hundredths. Do we have a negative symbol on the outside? of our absolute value sign? No. That means our answer is going to be a positive 3 fourths. All right, great job, Bobcats.